was that number four, right? That was number four, Amsterdam, Netherlands. Amsterdam, yeah. 59% Amsterdam alone. Mm. Wow. The rest of the Netherlands, I did not ask. Number, f what is it now? Number five, right? Yes, number five. Number five, Deutschland. That's what they spelled to me. They said Deutschland. They didn't say Germany. Oh. I was wow. thinking, mostly I call them Germany. I never call them Deutschland. Right, yes. And like the Netherlands, I never call them the Netherlands. I call them uh, Holland. Uh, yeah, right. But they call them Netherlands, and they call them Deutschland. So I wrote down exactly what they told me. Yes. It's not me who... I don't remember ever calling them the Netherlands. If I call them, I say Holland, because it's easier for me. <laughs> yes, yeah, more familiar. Most people call them Holland, yeah. In fact, when they told me the name, I said, pardon? <laughs> I forgot that Holland is also called the Netherlands. Yes. And they told me Amsterdam, and they said, oh, okay, okay, I know that country now. Mm. I didn't know how to spell Netherlands, and I wonder whether or not N-E-I-T-H-E-R land, or only N-E. I have never spelled that country's name. Is it N-E-I or N-E alone? N-E, Netherlands? I think it's N-E. N-E and then T-A's. Yeah, that's right. N-E and then Netherlands. Yes. I crossed out the I already. I was thinking it's not right. Then you would call it Netherlands, not <laughs> Netherlands. <laughs> right. I was arguing to myself and I crossed out the letter I now, but I wasn't sure, so I asked you. 59% Amsterdam. Number what now? Number five, you do. Number already. five, Deutschland. I repeat exactly what they say. I don't say Germany now. Okay. Deutschland. I say pardon and they spell the letters for me. Yeah. The other countries, I did not ask for the spelling, but the Netherlands. I don't remember speaking that word. I always say Holland, if I have to. Okay, now, number five, Deutschland is 55%. Wow. 55%. I would think maybe Deutschland would be above these uh, few countries, at least, but it's not. Yes. It's so surprising. Wow, you think 55. that they're really good. Oh my god, and that is surprising. All these, this is very surprising. Really yeah. shocking. All these. Heaven's so judgment is not what we think, you know. Yeah. I never thought of Tehran, Iran as number one on the list. Yes. I never thought of Poland, Warsaw, number two. Yes, me too. Yeah. Crambling, maybe two, three or something. But Deutschland is low in the middle of the list only. Yeah. Deutschland, 55%. And I ask if it's concentrated in any special area. They say no, the whole country, 55. Oh, wow. Now, let me ask one more time now with you alone. I mean, when we're talking to see if I make any mistake by hearing. Deutschland. No, no. I wonder why. Okay, never mind. I guess they suffer enough with the war before that. They also suffer a lot. Yes, that's right. So now, what number now? So now we need number six. Oh, number six. They told me the name of the city first. Fukushima, Japan. Oh. 52, 52%. Wow. What is this here? Uh, 52 plus, a little plus. 52 little plus percent. Ah. Oh. Yeah, in Fukushima. I didn't ask for the risk. Right. Okay. I could ask now, one moment. No, only that. Okay. Fukushima concentrated there, and the rest may be very little. Oh, it's just shred out together already, but Fukushima is the main subject. There's no more other karma. Yes, okay. Now, number seven, Denmark. Huh? Wow, Denmark. Yeah. Oh. Are you surprised yes, again? Yes, again. I would I think those whether. are very good countries. I know. I, I ask whether or not karma is particularly concentrated on any special city or not. But Denmark doesn't say any city, just 51.5%. Wow. Denmark seems... I would have thought that's such a peaceful country. 51% yeah. karma. Oh my goodness. Yeah, one of the happiest countries in the world. Yes. I'm more surprised than you, believe me. I was shocked. I was shocked. That's why I didn't ask so many questions and I didn't know what to ask because they keep telling me one country after another. 
And after the 10, I said, that's enough, that's enough. Okay, I don't have time right now. I said, just tell me the worst ones. The rest probably, I don't need to know. And the other countries, the rest of the world, after the top 10 is less than 50%. That's why they don't tell me. Okay. Not that they don't tell me, but they told me it's less than 50 because I asked, okay, just tell me generally. They say less than 50%, the rest after the top 10. Okay. I hope people are not going to hate me so much. Oh. That's why I told you it's very risky things that I'm doing. Yes, it is. It is. A risky thing to say. But if I know something and it doesn't harm and is the truth, and then it might help them to reflect and repent, then I just have to risk it. Yes, Master. If they kill me, they kill me. If I die, I die. Mm. All right, now, it was number seven, right? Yeah, now, it was number seven, now number eight. Number eight, DR Congo. Ah, oh, wow. Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm hmm Believe that or not, I never even remember all these names. Yes. Especially the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Yeah. I rarely ever come across this country's name. I don't remember. I even remember it. Yeah. I probably remember one or two times when it comes across on the news or something. My goodness. Hmm. That's unbelievable. <sighs> yeah. This is very surprising. What okay. We don't know. <laughs> I was so shocked. I was kind of shocked. I feel a little trembling, you know, because I never check these things. Yes. I just think of the war as uh, I have been karma anyway. I never think of checking even. Yes, Master. Only when in one of the meditations about some bad news or bad punishment coming or something, then I would ask why. Why? Yeah. Okay, what is it? Number eight now? Number eight already, right? Yeah, eight done. 51%. Oh, wow. 51. Yeah. Wow. Now, number nine, Zimbabwe. Can you believe that? Wow. 50 Four percent. Oh, gosh. Zimbabwe, I hardly ever heard of that name. Hardly ever remember it. Yes. Also, Congo. Now, number 10, China. Oh. Believe it? <laughs> you surprised again, right? Wow. As the least. Yeah. The least. China. 50,3 percent. Oh, my God. Even after Zimbabwe. Wow. Oh man, these are really shocking. What a surprise. <sighs> You're telling me. You're telling me. It is like that. I was so shocked that I just could not move. Yes. I could not think. Just bubbling around. Why? Just a couple of the first ones. The rest, I just kept so quiet, just listening and trying to let it sink in and to make sense of all of that. Yes, exactly. I hope the people of these top 10 countries and the rest of the world do reflect within, do ask God for forgiveness, do turn around and be real humans with benevolence, with mercy, with compassion, turn around, be vegan, make peace, do good deeds if you can, or praise someone who does good deeds. Even if you can't do it, just praise them openly or within your heart. That's all. Be vegan. Make peace. Do good deeds. So even if God punishes us physically in this lifetime for the burden of the great summary of sins, our souls still will be pardoned and liberated. Yes, Master. Not coming back again to take all the karma that is still there waiting for you to punish you again in the next lifetime. Just now talking to you, I can only think of this explanation that the people who were born into these above mentioned countries must have done something in their past life or lives. Ah, oh, right. Yes, Master. So that's why in this lifetime, it might not be evident. Ah, oh, right. Okay, that makes sense. It must have been like that. Like in the Bible, it says the sin of the ancestors. Yes. But who are the ancestors? It's us also anyway. We reborn again and again and again. That's also true, yes. A lot of evidence nowadays, people know, people prove that reincarnation exists. Yes, Master. 100% definitely. There's no doubt, no more argument about that. Mm.
My name is Dr. Walter Semkew. I'm the president of Reincarnation Research. The pioneer in reincarnation research is Dr. Ian Stevenson at the University of Virginia. For 40 years, he traveled around the world studying young children with spontaneous memories of past lives. From these cases, we can derive principles of reincarnation. One of the patterns is that people have the same personalities and talents and can look exactly like they did in their past incarnations. Barbara was born nine years after Anne Frank died. When Barbara was a little child and said, my name is Anna Frank, she had spontaneous memories of her past life as Anne Frank. At the time, her parents didn't even know who Anne Frank was because the diary of Anne Frank was not yet published and they thought she was making this all up. What makes her case compelling is not that she has the same facial features as Anne Frank, but she had memories from childhood. And by the time she was 10, her parents took her to Amsterdam and uh, the father wanted to go see the Anne Frank Museum. Barbara said, we don't need a cab, it's right near here. And they said, how can you possibly know? You've never been here. Somehow Barbara went straight to the Anne Frank house, looked at a wall and said, mommy, look, the pictures, uh, movie stars are still on the wall. And her mother looked at the wall and said, Barbara, there's nothing there. And the tour guide said, actually the pictures that Anne Frank had clipped out of magazines of movie stars had been on that wall. That was the first time her parents realized her past life memories were real or that her reported memories were not fantasies. And Barbara became a childhood writing prodigy, just like Anne Frank had her first book published at age 12. The other kids when they were younger say, I want to be a fireman, I want to be an astronaut, but I was always, I want to be a fighter pilot. From the age of three, James's parents began to hear stories from their son that shocked them, that their son was recalling things that connected him to a Navy pilot who died in 1945. They were skeptical. As Christians, they never believed in reincarnation, but they began to piece together an amazing story. The first clue came from the terrifying nonstop nightmares that James began having at the age of two. He was saying, airplane crash on fire, little man can't get out. Airplane crash on fire, little man can't get out. That's when I was like, oh my God, is that what he's been dreaming this entire time? What he was saying wasn't registering as much on me and what he, as what he was doing. He was flailing around in bed. Within a year, the visions that greeted James in his nightmares began taking shape when he was wide awake. I was reading to James and then he, sat up and he goes, Mama, the little man's going like this. And he laid down and he goes, and he did the same thing he did in his dream. He's kicking his feet up and he goes, the little man's going like this. Ooh, 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 can't get out, can't get out. And he, I sat him back up and I said, who's the little man? And he goes, me. It still makes my hair stand up. And Bruce said, what happened to your plane? And he said, it crashed on fire. And he said, why did your airplane crash? And he said, it got shot. James then gave his parents the next uncanny clue, one that was very specific, the name of a ship from which he says his aircraft took off. So I said, well, did your boat have a name? And he said, uh, Natoma. And I, I'd never heard the word before. And I went down the hall and uh, got onto the computer and Googled it. And down around hit 300. All there was this thing. Uh, the Toma Bay CVE-62 clicked on it, and up comes this history of a World War II aircraft carrier. I had no answers. Uh, you know, how could he know this? How could he know a person? How could he know a ship? Then James started drawing the same thing over and over, like a movie compressed all into one frame. An air battle, flak, 
a plane on fire. And his signature, James III. So one day I was in the kitchen, I was washing dishes, James had breakfast, and, and he had an airplane, he was just flying around like this, and he goes, Mama, before I was born, I was a pilot, and my airplane got shot in the engine and crashed in the water, and that's how I died. And I was just froze. The next breakthrough came when Bruce was invited to the Natoma Bay Veterans Reunion. He asked about the names of men killed in battle, and this led him to finally solving the mystery of James III. He called me on the phone and he said, you won't believe this, there's only one guy from the Toma Bay who was killed during the ba battle for Iwo Jima, and his name was, it was James M. Houston, Jr. And I said, wait, that would make our James, James III. Yeah. I was so excited. I'm like, that's it. I'm like, that's him. It's, J it's James M. Houston. His name is James, it's James III. James Houston, Jr., World War II Navy pilot, at age 21, on March 3rd, 1945, his plane was shot down over Chichijima. Now, the skeptical parents were sitting on compelling proof that their little boy really was reincarnated. Master, it seems you have answered this, but is there any way they can reduce their karma? Yeah, turn around, turn around. Mm. You turn, be a, a different person then karma cannot reach you. If you are vegan, if you pray to God daily for forgiveness, if you repent truly in your heart and do whatever you can to help others, be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, or praise people who do good deeds, acknowledge them either physically, openly, verbally, actively, or just in your heart. Be sincere, be repentant, be humbly asking, for God's forgiveness. Remember God all the time. Respect God's law. Thou shall not kill. If you're going south, it's not that difficult. I tell you truly, if you just turn around, then you will be forgiven. <laughs>